2 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. Hear the word of the living God. Then David mustered the men who were with him and set over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. And David sent out the army, one third under the commander of Joab, under the command of Joab, and one third under the command of Abishai, the son of Zuriah, Joab's brother, and one third under the command of Ittai the Gittite. The king said to the men, I myself will go out with you. But the men said, You shall not go out, for if we flee, they will not care about us. If half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth 10,000 of us. Therefore, it is better that you send us help from the city. The king said to them, Whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood at the side of the gate with all the, while all the army marched out by hundreds and by thousands. So, as we have been walking through question 127 of the Westminster Larger Catechism, which is covering the fifth commandment to honor the father and mother, we have reached this phrase in the answer. The honor which inferiors owe their superiors is, and the phrase we will focus on today is, fidelity to defense and maintenance of their persons and authority according to their several ranks and the nature of their places. So one of the ways, one of the ways that we owe, that we honor superiors, mothers and fathers and superiors, is by showing them loyalty. Now, loyalty is a word that has become, it has become fashionable to despise. Employers used to talk about being loyal as an employee, uh, but the pseudo-egalitarians have raged enough that very few people still talk that way in today's world. I, I owe my employer loyalty? That sounds abusive and cultish and toxic to many in our time. But as Christians, we really do need to take this word back. You will always be loyal to something. The question is not whether you will be loyal, but to whom will you be loyal? The only only acceptable answer that most American evangelicals, and these are the Christians, most American evangelicals, uh, is that we owe loyalty to God and then to ourselves. Which certainly is true. Uh, We do owe loyalty first and foremost to God. But it is precisely because we owe loyalty to God, that you owe loyalty and fidelity to your other superiors. Think about a teenage boy with a good dad, okay? A good dad. A genuinely good and godly and involved dad. And what would you think of that teenage boy if he said, yeah, you know, my dad is okay. He's not terrible. Um, But I'd really much rather have Kyle Laporte as my dad. All right? That's weird. Now, Kyle's a great guy, right? Kyle's a good dad. But that's a strange disordering of loyalties, right? That would be really strange. Kyle would run, of course, right? So you should be loyal to your own father and mother before you focus on being loyal to anybody else's father and mother and to your other superiors. So part of the fifth commandment requires us to be loyal to our legitimate superiors. So who is that? Well, we've covered a lot of this before, but to whom do we owe this fidelity or loyalty? Well, that depends on their several ranks and the nature of their places, according to the catechism. So you owe a specific loyalty to your employer that you don't really owe to a man who is a superior in age or in gifts. That employer is carrying the risk and run, of running an organization and providing you with the opportunity to trade your time and skills for money. Right? You have time and skills. Maybe not as many as you'd like, but you do have time and skills, right? But if your employer wasn't carrying much of the risk, you wouldn't be able to cash those skills in as easily. They are providing you with an opportunity to put food on your family's dinner table. So we owe a certain kind of fidelity to our employers, but also to our own mothers and fathers, like literal mothers and fathers, right? None of our mothers and fathers should be sitting alone and lonely in a nursing home at the end of their earthly lives. 
We owe them faithfulness. We also owe fidelity to elders and pastors. They are worthy of double honor, as Paul says in 1 Timothy 5. And this is where the unbelievers really start getting goosebumps. Now, it's getting, it was a little culty before talking about employers, but now it's really culty. Right? Um, but that's nonsense, and we shouldn't give that the time of day. Because we really do owe loyalty to our pastors and elders. And so, what does that look like? Well, here's a real-life example, um, especially in our denomination. But a real-life example would be when a pastor or a church in our presbytery gets attacked by the unbelieving culture falsely. That's important. Gets attacked falsely by the unbelieving culture. What should we do? We should defend them publicly and stand beside them if it comes to that. We should be ready to stand before the Twitter mob and say, you're lying and you need to repent. That's a good man. He's a good pastor and a good church. But it's much, much easier in those circumstances to just simply stay silent so that none of the heat deflects off onto you. Because then we don't we don't catch any of that heat that has been directed at them. Let's act like we don't have a very close relationship with that church and maybe people won't put. Um, the names together. Unfortunately, there's like three church names in our denomination, Christ Church, Trinity, or what's the other one? I don't know. Yeah, Covenant. That's it. That's it, basically. So there's no real uh, ability to shift the heat in that, in that regards. And so we need to reclaim the idea of loyalty, especially loyalty to um, godly and le- or legitimate superiors. Uh, because America really does know a lot about loyalty. Again, it's not whether, it's which. There will always be loyalty. We know about loyalty to sports teams or college alma maters or blindly to all police officers or all firefighters or whatever the flag, whatever the newest uh, colored ribbon on the flag is, right? The liberals who call this cultish are the same people um, going to great lengths to honor those in their selected protective classes. Right. So honor your own superiors, protect what the catechism says, protect their persons and their authority, praise them in public, protect their reputation or as Paul says elsewhere, give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. Well, because we find it easier to talk about the flaws of our superiors uh, than we do to publicly praise them and show them honor and loyalty. We are reminded of the need to confess our sins regularly. So if you're able, please join us as we confess our sins silently. And then we will do so corporately using the prayer found in the bulletin.